Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler and Charles Rivera at UFC 262. The fight did not go the way I had hoped. It didn't go the way I expected. Um, I'm sure it didn't go the way Ch- uh, Michael Chandler had expected. I mean, I was rooting for Michael um, and, and throughout the whole thing. And at one point, you know, uh, before, in fact, before, before I get to that, um, let me just say that, uh, you know, it's like one of those situations, again, as in like a UFC 257. Uh, many people may not agree with me when I say this, but it's, it's what I use as an example. Excuse me, but it's what I use as an example. Um, when one fighter who who has fought so well within the sport, um, you know, meets another fighter who has fought relatively well, but not as well as as themselves. Excuse me. You know, um, it's kind of deemed almost impossible for the first fighter who has fought so well within the sport to lose within within that organization. You know, within the sport. You know, at UFC two fifty seven, had uh, you had. We had Dustin Poirier versus um, versus Conor McGregor, and you know many people. You know the the odds on Conor, Conor McGregor winning were very, very, very much in his favor, and the odds of Dustin Poirier winning were not so much in his favor. But you know, <laughs> even I was shocked when I woke up the following morning over here in the UK, the following Sunday morning, and looked through the news at the, and all the uh, highlights on the UFC Fight Pass. And I'm just shocked that Dustin Poirier had won the fight. I mean, I wanted Dustin Poirier to win, but my gut instinct told me that that was not going to be the case, that, that Conor McGregor would go in there and do what he does best and he would win. But that didn't happen. As in this case, I thought that Michael Chandler would win. Michael Chandler, who is a solid wrestler, has a solid ground game, uh, you know, and he's also very good, very dangerous with his hands. You know, he's a really explosive fighter, so has that explosive power in, in, his, um, in his overall um, craft. You know, I thought I thought that he would win. I thought that this would be easy money for for him. I thought he would 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 win for a TKO or a, a straight straight knockout, but that wasn't the case. And you know, obviously, his opponent um, Charles Oliveira had gone away and done his homework. Uh, you know, had assessed his opponent, done all the things you need to do for a fight, train and eat right, make weights, and you know, looked at his opponent, Michael Chandler, looked at how he's fight his and um, fighting style, his stand up, his stance. You know, how he performs in the octagon. You know, and I could see that um, Oliveira Oliveira attacked, but he, I think he more so defended himself well. Where he where he really really performed was on the ground. His ground game was really really good. Um, shots he threw shots, but I think it was on the, it was on the ground. His wrestling and his grappling was really really good. Um, you know, at one point there was the takedown. No, not takedown, but it was the body slam that Michael Chandler executed or did in the Oxford there when Oliveira was on his back and that really didn't help things as much because um, Oliveira still managed, still clung on and still managed to do some damage. I mean, Michael Chandler kind of had to like, from what I could see, kind of twist himself well, really well enough to get out of that grip and was back on his feet. And it was towards the end of the first round, from what I could see, um, when Chandler had um, Oliveira cornered on one side of the octagon, was ju- just dishing out shots and, and dishing out uh, counter strikes, and Oliveira was on the ground. I thought, okay, this is it. This is it. this is where Marco Chandler's going to win, and you know, and happened. I was just hoping, I was just hoping, looking for that TKO, TKO, or that knockout, and it just you know, didn't come. Um, you know, and really, I think where Oliveira just kind of changed everything and just set you know, second the record straight was in the second round, just with it, just not even up to a minute into the second round and uh just about 20 to 30 seconds in into the into the first round and um Oliveira just it was that left god I can't remember was it left hook or right I think it was a left hook that just knocked um uh, um knocks Michael Chandler side, sideways brought him down and uh, he just he couldn't recover from it and just he couldn't recover from that from that strike that came from Charles Oliveira and he, um, you know, Oliver just finished uh, finished the uh, finished the fight. You know, um, the referee just had to stop the fight. He won. He won. Um, I was because I really do like Michael Chandler. You know, he's well well put together. Guy speaks well. You know, if you meet him for the first time, I'm sure anyone who's not even has never even heard of mixed martial arts or any other combat sport, even boxing, I'll go that far to say, to say that. Um, he's the sort of person that if you meet him for the first time you wouldn't even know that mixed martial arts is what he does for a living that he, that he's a professional mixed martial arts fighter 
you know, because he speaks so well. He's an educated guy, an, an educated man, comes from a really well to do background. So, he, someone like that, you know, um, I, I have to say that I've taken a great, a great liking to him, liking to him, and I have a, a lot of respects for him. So, uh, you know, I was really rooting for him in this fight, but you know, he may not like hearing this, and many other Michael Chandler fans may not like hearing this. Many other mixed martial arts fans, fight fans, combat sports fans may not like hearing me say this, but you know. It's a given that although you do have the rare, um, the rarities such as GSP and K- Khabib, who has not lost a single fight in mixed martial arts, twenty nine and zero, um, crazy. You can't win them all, um, you know. For a majority of us, you know, you can't, you, you can't win them all. So, but the next, I'm sure he's going to win. Definitely, he, he Michael Chandler will win, will win the next fight. It may go the other way, but. I'm sure he's going to go back to the drawing board. You heard him in that post press conference um, with Dana and the other and the other team. Um, I'm sure he's going to go back to the. He said himself he's going to go back to the gym and start training again and preparing for the next fight. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm not going to sound emotional. It's um, nobody died in this, but no, I was really hoping and uh, I was really rooting for Michael Chandler to win. So next up, which is an, the next fight, which was a fight which I was hoping would go one way, which I thought would go one way, that I thought would the win would go to Tony Ferguson uh, because his fighting style is so it's crazy. Um, no, that wasn't the case at all. Excuse me. God, dry mouth. Always happens when I'm making these podcasts. So in this fight, um, Tony Ferguson's stand up was just it, it was it was mad. I mean, kind of like jumping the gun. I'm gonna say when going to the post uh, to the post interviews to the post press conference interviews that the fighters do, uh, when Darius was speaking to uh, speaking to an interviewer, uh, one thing he did say is that when he had um, Tony Ferguson's leg in a leg lock or in a heel lock, um, it. it he actually heard god this is such a brutal sport he heard uh, ferguson's ankle pop and even though ferguson was in agony you could see the, the agony and the pain um etched and written all over um, tony ferguson's face on the camera there um you know he's uh, darish said in the interview that um uh, it was just crazy and uh, that tony ferguson isn't normal for the fact that even after that injury he still got up and was still fu- was still fighting and performing like nothing had happened you know, it's crazy. He said that you know Tony Ferguson isn't human, and I can see what he means after seeing some of Tony Ferguson's fights, including this one that Tony Ferguson okay didn't lose. Um, the way Tony Ferguson moves, especially in his stand up, I'm gonna word this kind of with ca- with throwing caution to the winds. Um, I am gonna say that he's sort of like a slippery character when he's on his feet because he moves so well when it comes to like, um, being defensive and invasive avoiding the attack coming from your opponent the strikes um the hooks the uppercuts whatever he moves in such a way and he doesn't like it's almost like second nature like it just he doesn't have to look but he'll know it's coming and just move his head out of the way it, you know it's crazy just it's mad and another thing is that when he's on the ground so when he's grappling or wrestling his ground game um, may not be so good but he will refuse to tap he won't tap at all we saw that um, in this fight as i've mentioned with the leg lock we saw that in the uh, the fight with Charles Oliveira at UFC two, the UFC two fifty six, yeah UFC two fifty six, whereby Charles Oliveira nearly broke his arm, and the referee had to call a stop to the fight. You could see his the upper his upper bicep, the, his upper arm, was was going to break, <laughs> was definitely going to break. And Tony Ferguson still, of course, if that's going to happen, you know, you're definitely going to be feeling a lot of pain, a lot of critical pain, and excuse me, and um. In that situation, any normal person, your reaction would be to stop. You know, and the referee will stop. And in this case, your normal reaction to to get out of that situation, you know, to stop, to avoid what could be a very horrible, nasty situation um coming to be, to be approaching, you wouldn't want the whole thing to stop. You know, you would tap basically. Is what I should have said. You would tap to stop your opponent from hurting you further. But of course, unfortunately, you sacrifice the win, which which potentially you could take away from the fight. Your opponent will win the fight. But the point points of what I'm making is that this guy, Tony Ferguson, seems like a sort of mixed martial arts fighter that will fight his opponent to the death. 
you know it's just um it's mad um which is why initially i thought that he would win this fight but it looks like Dar- you know his opponent um benil darush um hopefully i'm pronouncing that correctly ben darush you know his ground game probably proved to be too much for um uh, proved to be too too much for tony ferguson and that's um one of the reasons why he um he didn't win um you know it's uh it's crazy and now the question that many people are asking well many people um i say many people the question on um people's lips even myself because i'm just thinking about it and just going through some some old um just as much doing as much research as i can on tony ferguson's uh past and especially in terms of mixed martial arts um should this guy retire will he retire and um the dreams of becoming champion of his division within the ufc um will those dream dreams ever become a reality and you know from what i've been hearing for the things the sorts of sources and information i've been coming across um i have to say um most people are pointing in the direction of no although uh, he's only what 37 years old so he's just about 36 37 you're kind of gradually entering the territory that you know the territory of retirement where most mixed martial arts fighters where most combat sports athletes do start to you know think about think about you know um uh, calling it a day um you know it's these sort of situations um with people but, well uh, one point i should also make is that he's now lost this is his third fight in the row he's lost he's now lost um Benio, um darish he lost to justin gaethje and he lost to charles Oliveira. three losses in a row um but i don't think he will try i don't think the ufc will cut him just yet um because i think he's lot he's won more fights than he's lost not that this that will necessarily necessarily mean anything but you know and i'm not sure if i can compare here but looking at um uh, another fight to donald Cerrone, his own fight that he lost to um, alex morono last weekend was at ufc vegas 26 um he's had what five or six losses in a row now and in the ufc i think dana wise just think of giving him just one last chance if he doesn't produce a win then it's time to call it quits and cut ties and um let him go um, but Tony Ferguson's case, I, I don't think he's going to retire. No, I mean, looking at his social media posts, he said, um, well, Jesus Christ didn't tap out. So I, I think retiring is the last thing on his mind. So um, I think, can he, is there still a chance for him to, be, to become champion of his division? Mm, may, because I'm saying this to someone who still has so much to learn about the, about this sport. You're 37 years old. Um, obviously, you're going to drop further down in the rankings now. Um, well, I'll say it's not impossible, but I think it's doubtful. It's doubtful that he'll ever become champion of the lightweight division. Uh, so, uh, but I mean, in this sport, you know, again, th- things, you know, it's a, it's a crazy sport. Th- things change all the time. Like the Michael Chandler fight, I thought, I was, I thought he would win. The Dustin Poirier fight against Conor McGregor at UFC 257. I thought he'd win. Um, Israel Asanya against um, Jan Blachowicz back at... I can't remember the name of the event now. Um, I thought everybody, including myself, I thought it was obvious that Israel Asanya would win. You know, he would have to win. He's got the uh, speed and agility and athleticism on his side. He can move a lot quickly. He He's really good in his, strike, in his striking. Striking is a second nature to him. Um, you know, and many people are a really close friend to Jan and Joanna whose surname I can't pronounce. Um, even she said herself, her friend Jan Blackwitz has a lot more to lose than Israel Asanya, but that night things changed. You know, um, uh, Jan proved everybody wrong. So, where this guy's concerned, I think it's still possible, I guess, for him to become champion of the weight of his, of the lightweight division, but, of, of, his, of the lightweight division, but um, I think yeah i think it's going to be extremely doubt it's extreme, extremely doubtful and um it's going to be very hard because obviously he's lost his fight now and in the rankings he's going to drop <laughs> even lower the way down so so what ranking is he now at the moment okay, just let me check that can't 
can't really see here on show dog. Okay. What ranking is this guy? He's had 25 wins and 6 losses. Then the UFC. What ranking? Ah, oh, UFC ranking. Let's do, 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 do. It's white weight, light weight, bantam weight, feather weight, do, 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 light weight. So, Benil Darush is at number 9. I mean, I'm assuming they haven't updated it yet after the fight. Tony Ferguson sitting at number 5. Well, I'm assuming they, have, they still haven't updated the rankings for for this um, for the fight for the event that's just taken place. So you know, after this fight, obviously he's going to drop down further in the rankings. But uh, yeah, I mean, just to finish up on that point, um, I think um, maybe he can still become champion. Um, I say that just off the back of the fact that in this sport things are changing all the time. It's just how crazy in the sport of and the sport and the community of mixed martial arts is. Um, but you know, uh, wait, we'll wait and see. And for me, I think being realistic at 37 years old and three losses now, and there's always younger talent coming in into the sport all the time. I think probably it is um, uh, doubtful, but we'll wait and see what happens. Next up uh, was the uh, the fight that caught my eye was uh, Matt Schneel versus Roger uh, Bontorin. Uh, not much I can uh, not much I can say about this fight. Um, good stand up from both guys. Really good stand up. Um, both guys uh, were really going for it from from either side. Uh, especially Roger, Roger, who did win the fight. He was throwing leg kicks, see and some knees in there, some strikes, and you know his ground game was really uh, really good. So, um, but I mean, at the beginning of the fight, I thought that Matt Sneal actually would, would win because he was throwing some. Serious counter strikes, counter strikes from his uh, from his side. Right, so I'm going to move on now to a, a quite controversial um, topic. Um, Joshua Fabia. Um, I'm going to try and get him on the ne- on if not my next one, probably the next two or three episodes. You know, um, pro- well, I'll try and get him onto the pod onto the podcast at some point just to get his side of the story about what has happened. Um, because I know that he's a very unpopular name in the sport of mixed martial arts at the moment, in the combat sporting community. And um, I just want to get his take on things, you know, just to get both sides of the story before making up my own minds about what's happened. And I've heard, so, seen so many interviews that he's done with people. He's always done it with um, Diego Sanchez by his side there. But I just want to speak to him one on one. So, I mean, if you do, if you guys, if you listen to this one to the podcast, if you think I should get him onto the podcast, um, uh, please leave your opinion in the or whatever you think please leave your opinion in the comment section down below guys see I think I've covered everything I can cover um, in this episode of course there'll be more to come in the next episode if you did enjoy this episode guys please don't forget to leave a like and please uh, subscribe you can f- uh, listen to my podcast on Spotify Apple iTunes and on Google Podcasts and there's also other audio platforms there as well and you can follow me on Instagram my name is IcoJarko1 one and on twitter my name is Iko Jarko and on facebook if you guys still use that my name is Iko Jarko thanks